Hey, hey, what's going on, everyone? Um, got some exciting news again. I know I said I will be back sooner, but, you know, life happens. Um, the, the crazy thing is, is even though um, there's been a gap like 2022 to 2024 between, you know, my last cert and my newest cert is um, I actually took another SANS course, um, the GNFA, the Network Forensic Analyst. But I, I don't know. I wasn't too interested in the course material. I didn't feel like once I started taking it, I didn't feel like it lined up with my job responsibilities or whatever. So I took the course, but I just didn't take the exam, you know. Um, so I don't know, but uh, I, I still have all the materials. And maybe at one point, maybe after I take more certs and I'm kind of done with those certs, then I might just go back and, you know, uh, refresh myself on the material and maybe take the exam. But as of right now, I don't have the motivation to take that one. But anyway, um, I'll come back to you again with me taking another certification, which is the incident handler. Um, as we can see, I passed with the 88, which is great. And um, I have a lot of thoughts on this certification. <laughs> so let me just get down to the nitty gritty. First of all, um, I did it backwards. Most people would take the GCIH and then advance to the GCFA because the GCFA is a far more difficult cert and more advanced cert in terms of what is being taught and what they expect you to know. Um, but... You know, I feel like the GCIH is very popular. A lot of people like it. A lot of people know it. And a lot of people want it. Just kind of like the CISSP. I don't really, I've already shared my thoughts on CISSP. I don't really like it too much. But because it's so popular um, and everybody, it's a buzzword on resumes and stuff like that. And it gives you that competitive advantage when, you know, applying for positions and things like that. It's a good start to have. So I put the GCIH in that bucket. So, uh if we kind of go on what GCIH kind of uh, is targeting in terms of what is in the, it's supposed to be for like the name, uh, you know, certified incident handler. But I would say that, you know, being an incident handler for as long as I have, I don't feel like this is like a cert that practicalizes what an incident handler does. I think like the first uh, day or the first book, the first book or two kind of does that. But the other uh, material pretty much lets you know what certain tools do. Like if attackers want to do certain things on the network, um, you know, it kind of like helps you to understand how those attacks work um, from an attacker standpoint, why they will use certain attacks and things like that. So they, cause I do agree that from a defender standpoint you have to understand the attacks in order to be the best defender and i think that methodology is what encapsulates this um, certification i think it's more so understanding how attackers use certain attacks to compromise networks and take advantage of certain protocols and and um, uh, tools and softwares and th things like that um so i think from that point is good but if you ha if you are someone you know not to my own horn but myself that has like years of experience underneath your belt and you have more advanced cert like uh, G GCFA or you know um, I wouldn't say CISSP but um, G Pen or other you know red team certs or other advanced incident handler certs um, or even just have a lot of experience with incident handling I don't think that this certification will be for you I don't think it's gonna help you in terms of like technical logic te te uh, technical ability knowledge and things like that I think it's more so uh, a buzzword on your resume so if you need like an extra push on your resume I would say get it but outside of that I wouldn't like recommend paying all the money that you would pay in order to take this cert. So I just wanted to say that much. But again, like I said, it teaches you how certain attacks work, drive-by attacks, um, endpoint and pivoting, um, incident response, just a little bit like the um, the incident response life cycle and uh, other life cycles that you should adopt more so than using the, in, the typical incident uh, response life cycle that everybody knows, um, how to use Nmap, Netcat, um, Hashcat, um, Hashdump, all of the different tools that attackers use when they're on the network, you will learn how to use here. So I can see why they totally categorize this as a red team cert, because at first I was confused about that. I was like, incident handling is more of a blue responsibility, a blue role. But um, when I took the course, then I understood why, because they're teaching you how to pretty much attack a network, essentially the tools that you would need, the commands that you would need to run 
in PowerShell, in the different tools like Netcat, all of these different tool responder, all of these different tools that are out there, they pretty much cover in this course. And how uh, to detect them and also uh, defenses against them, which is good to know. Like I said, to be a good incident responder, you have to know how attacks work and things like that. So I think it's good. In terms of uh, my recommendations, of, of course, the index is always number one. Like I took um, – this is my first time taking an actual in-person class versus on-demand. And I always say that I prefer on-demand versus uh, in-person because in-person, they just throw so much information at you. It's hard to digest it. Some people like it. But for me, I like to slowly uh, consume the material to make sure I understand it well. So I went for the first day. And then after that, I didn't go anymore. Um, I just wanted to collect the books. Um, one thing that I like about um, uh, the the the, the uh, live in-person training is they still give you videos for the lab exercises so that you know you can have somebody to kind of walk through the those things with you but i don't need anybody like especially if i have to go through the books in any way to index so i have to read the material anyway i don't really need someone to guide me through the material in a track in a class setting so i just decided to go for the first day get the books and then i left so i could do my indexing um i took the class in uh end of april the last week of april and i ended up taking the exam yesterday so pretty much a month and a half of digesting the material um creating the index uh as well as taking the practice exams you know re-indexing you know getting all my material together pretty much so just with a month and a half of that i was able to you know do everything needed to pass the exam the uh, of, i feel like i give the same advice in all of my uh you know videos but yes i'm going to give the same advice again the index is paramount is like the thing that you should be doing and it should be very detailed very go into detail with it you know what i'm saying so i always create four different columns number one is acronyms or the thing that the term is actually associated with like for example if i would say a uh, hash cat is the term the acronym or the thing that i will put in the acronym ter- uh column would be uh you know password hashes or something like that you know uh just something to help you correlate what the term is associated with right Ver- or an acronym either one right um number 2 the the other column is uh book dot page number so i don't have two different columns for the book and the page number just do book dot page number and then the last column is necessary notes um, uh, that is pertinent to that actual term. So the biggest piece of advice that I've learned over all of the search that I've taken is that if you can avoid going to the book, that is the best option. As soon as you go to the book, you're going to start wasting time. Like I always say, time is of the essence when it comes to these exams. The, the first piece of advice, if you can't go to the book, if you don't need to go to the book, meaning that the information that you have within your index gives you the answer to the question, that is the ideal scenario. Or, of course, the ideal is knowing it off the top of your head, right? But if you have to go to any type of material, if you could put it on your index somehow, I think that is the best option. Number two, if you have to go to the book, if you can't get the answer within a minute and a half, two minutes, skip that question. Just skip it and come back to it. Because I remember one exam, I think it was defending advanced threats. I think it was this one that I I literally only had like one or two minutes left. And it was because like, I got to like question like 60 or something. And I was just looking all over the book and I spent like 20 minutes on that particular question. And it wasn't even a VM question. It was just a multiple choice question. So I was just like, okay, you know, from now on, I'm going to set a two minute minimum or maximum for searching for a, a questions answer. And if I can't find it within two minutes, skip it, move to the next one. Even up till date, the maximum, I think they give you 15 questions that you can skip. The maximum that I've ever skipped was like eight, you know, because the majority of times I can find the answer within two minutes, like I said. So that's just something for time management. Because again, there's one thing that, and I think Sans does it on purpose. There's one thing that I don't like that they do is they they let they only let you take the cyber live uh, part of the exam after you finish all the multiple choice. I don't necessarily like that, but that's what they do because you know uh you 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 can go you know uh you know be having some issues with the multiple choice uh, with the multiple choice and then by the time you get to the cyber live you can have like 30 minutes to do uh 10 cyber live questions and you know like i always say i've heard that if you fail a lot of the cyber live uh questions that you automatically fail the exam so if they weigh them so much 
they should, you know, ensure that you are able to tackle the questions first. But again, that's probably part of the vetting pro- process to see if you actually know the material well. So, or another hurdle that you have to come to make the exam more difficult. So, I get it. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, if you're new to cyber and you just and you need that cert to kind of put you on the map, especially if you want to be an incident handler. I think this is the cert to have, and it helps you understand how attacks work, how to detect them, how to defend against them, and just how to know certain tools that are being used by the adversary and uh, other things like that. So I think this, along with you know uh, GCIA intrusion analysis, um, are like the entry level sh- certs, the starting points in which I feel like you should start from in order to understand. Um, how things work from a, dis- a, a, a defender standpoint, also from an incident handling and attacker standpoint. But like, if you really want to get like down into the weeds and really, you know, enhance your skills, I would definitely say GCFA. GCFA isn't a entry level certification, but I feel like if you have a good head on your shoulder and you put the work in, the time in, I feel like you can pass that cert first time also. Um, so yeah, man, uh, like I said, my experience was good. It, the material was good, you know, and things like that, you know, but I just feel like they should change the name of this cert. It shouldn't be incident handler. It should be like, um, like junior it, this is like the first step to g pen to me so it's like junior g pen <laughs> junior g pen or something like that uh but incident handler i don't think that should be the name of it but anyway i think i'm gonna take a, a little break for now but like i said i think like right now i've taken all the gx search that i've wanted that i want to i think i might entertain g pen because you know when i did some of the lab exercises and things like that i enjoyed you know, the password cracking and all of those diff- different things. So I might do G-Pen just for the hell of it, just to, you know, uh, do some red teaming and get some red teaming certs underneath my belt. Um, also, I like I said, for the same reasons I got GCIH, I think I might get CISSP as well. So it's either going to be CISSP next or it's going to be G-Pen, but I'll let you know. <laughs> Put in the comments what you think I'm going to get, whether it's uh, G-Pen or CISSP. But um, anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, again, put it in the chat. And, you know, I tend to respond pretty quick when people write something there. But hope this helps. Hope it was helpful. Um, yeah. See y'all later.